Migration is a big part of the solving the issues that have been canvassed at the Job Summit, but we've just heard there are 900,000 visas yet to be processed in the system, and that's come down from a million. So there's a big problem there. The government are committing $36 million to get more staff, 500 more staff, in the department to get this going. But that is a clear indication, a clear example of how some businesses are being held back, and it's right across multiple sectors. Joining me now is the New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet, we saw you in the uh, job summit. Uh, you liked this announcement, but when it comes to visa processing, I mean, that you must be tearing your hair out. Like you need these workers well, yesterday. Well, I, I think if you go back the last couple of years, there are clearly areas of the public service that weren't doing anything. Mm. Um, there, were, uh, there was obviously, through a whole range of departments, a lot of focus on getting our people through the pandemic from a health side and economic side. But what a wasted opportunity to be sitting there and not um, allocating resources to getting uh, these visas processed. Now, my understanding is that the federal government has allocated significant additional resources to home affairs to get these, v uh, these visas processed. Uh, but when you've got that many in a backlog and you've got people overseas who are choosing, making a decision in relation to where to live, mm. um, well, if it's, if it's taking months here, um, we're, we're not really up there with the rest of the, with the, rest yeah, of the world. Yeah, and Dad Walton just made a really good point, saying, you know, Australia's amazing, Sydney's amazing, we think everyone wants to come here, but we're a bit arrogant because our reputation isn't as good as we think it is. Is that right? Well, take international students, for example. There's something I worked on as Treasurer during, um, during the pandemic. We had, um, obviously, we sent many students home. And um, at a time um, during that period of two years, we had other countries, the UK, Canada, that were really aggressively targeting into our foreign students into their country, whereas we were saying, please don't come. In fact, we we're actually saying, please leave. Um, so That's a Morrison government hangover. Was that a mistake? Oh, I, don't th well, I don't think we should have asked them to leave, yes. Um, and, and secondly, um, you know, I, I worked a lot as treasurer in our state with the universities to bring, to bring back students. And it was obviously contentious because we're, you, you were balancing that with wanting to get Australians to come home. Hmm. Um, and there's obviously still very heightened concerns in relation to the spread of the virus. Uh, but there's a lot of work. I mean, to your question, yeah. there's a lot of work that we have to do, I think, reputationally, uh, to not just to, to attract people into the country with that, which have the skills that we need. Um, so first things first, the backlog needs to be removed. Uh, but secondly, I agree with you, we can't have the arrogance to sit there and think that people just want to come to Australia. Yeah. Uh, we're competing with countries from around the world. So I think some of the changes they've made today in terms of fast-tracking permanency, um, I, I think we're, and I think we'll go a long way to doing that. What about childcare? You've been so forward-leaning on this. In, in fact, one of the first things you did as Premier, I think you upset the uh, the Treasurer at the time, your same side of politics, um, about childcare. You think it should be essentially <laughs> run by uh, the states. Um, but there is a lot of movement there. Yeah. Uh, we see this government um, not seeing it as a as a welfare measure, seeing it as a, as a productivity one. How can you work with the Albanese government to actually improve what is, I think, really architecturally a mess? Well, it is. And, and Laura, so a couple of things. Down there today at the summit, we spoke about the short-term issues of migration, that, and that's, that may solve labour shortages and skills shortages in the short term. But we cannot focus on long-term reform. And, and the point I made was that I think we're moving into a, a time now where we need to focus on... Uh, looking at the areas of responsibility that may have laid with the Commonwealth or that may have laid with the states and say, no, you know what, let's go both get involved. Mm. And we did that in this um, year's budget in relation to over $5 billion for childcare to, yep. to help construct more childcare centres, provide greater placements and training, um, particularly in those areas where there are childcare deserts. Extra year of school. Yeah, and extra in that pre-K, we did that with the Victorian government. And now th that's a kind of I mixture saw between I, I Commonwealth and I saw Dan and Andrews getting all the credit for that. That yesterday. But... Well, we worked on we worked. <laughs> it's not about the credit; it's about the outcome. Okay, Laura. okay. Um, and and we we worked on that together. And I think that's nation-leading reform as well yep. that we've slowly moved towards over some time. But it's not just good for our kids because we know the educational outcomes are important. But in addition to that, particularly with childcare as well, mm. in, in, incredibly important for women's participation in the workforce yep. and the economic opportunity that comes um, from the back of that. So, let, yes, let's focus on the short term and immigration. Yeah. But simply adding people as well is only one part of driving economic growth. We
we need to be investing in our people and I think the Commonwealth and the states need to continue to work together, not have a blame game situation to say, no, childcare is your responsibility, mm. we're not touching it. What about multi-employer bargaining and the ability to strike? I mean, that must be sending shivers down your spine at the moment. Concerning. <laughs> Concerning? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there will always be issues between employers and employees, mm. that's part of life, it's always existed. Um, but when you expand that out to, from, to an industry posi uh, position, uh, then when it comes to industrial action, you're likely to have greater inconvenience than you would otherwise. So uh, I'm sure they'll continue to work yeah. through the details, but uh, we need to minimise industrial action, not, uh, not provide an opportunity for um, more inconvenience for the people of our state or, or, or country. What is going on with the train strikes? I mean, uh, it is so frustrating if you live in and around Sydney. You've put down an ultimatum for the unions. They're basically saying whatever, we don't care, and moving ahead with industrial action. Do you not have the ability to stop this? Well, we can apply to the Fair Work Commission to terminate the agreement, and that's the current um, enterprise agreement, and that's uh, what I've said that we will, we will do um, if further industrial action is taken. Um, we've put an offer to the unions, um, and uh, they should take that to their members, uh, and they should vote on it. And I keep on saying I... it's about safety. What is it about? It seems like there's a whole lot of politics wrapped up in this. Well, they're now talking about pay, and they want it, they want it, they want it, an additional pay above the pay cap that we have in New South Wales. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to give a greater pay increase to train drivers mm. uh, above nurses or above teachers. I'm not doing that. So Chris Minns isn't going to do it either. Is he? No, but this is all about politics. Let's, let's be frank. This is there, there is a reason why in New South Wales, it's very clear. There's a reason why in New South Wales. Uh, there is in, uh, widespread industrial action by the public sector unions. Uh, it's because as a Liberal government um, that we are not seeing that uh, in any other uh, jurisdiction around mm. the country where there are Labor governments. It, it, when our wages policy in New South Wales is the most generous in the country, um, okay. our health system is the strongest in the country, they're not protesting other states. We, this is, tip, this is uh, purely political. They want, if the unions want to behave in that way, I think that's disappointing. We'll continue to focus on the people of New South Wales and mm. they should too. Just quickly before I let you go, you had a win on the five-day isolation. Yep. When do you want to see isolation for COVID cases dropped altogether, like the UK? As soon as possible. By the um, end of the year? I, 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 I believe we need to move away from public health orders. We, we need to move away, move to a system where people respect each other. If you're sick, you stay at home. If you're not sick, you go to work. The state should not be enforcing... Um, uh, these orders at this time in the um, in the pandemic. Dominic Perrottet, good to see you. Thanks so much.